Welcome to Football Mania. A weekly half-hour program of action-packed Philippine brand of soccer football. Feeding you a dose of highlights, scores, and features of football events all over Metro Manila. So sit tight as we warm up for Germany 2006 FIFA World Cup Finals. Welcome to Football Mania. You're watching Football Mania! You're watching, You're watching Football, Football Mania. Mania! Football Mania. So hold on as we give you this week's episode of Football Mania. This week on What's Going On, a segment bringing you information on events, schedules, listings, and results. We'll be covering the opening ceremonies of the UAAP Football Championships, featuring game highlights and goals from the day-long festivities. On Passport, where your favorite teams, players, and personalities are profiled. We're going to the Kamagong trees of the UP Diliman campus to check out the UP Maroons men's football team under the tutelage of Coach Bob Salvacion. Then we bring you Crash Course, where you get the information on training tips, instructionals, and facts of the game. We got Hat Trick Incorporated, a group of pioneering footballers venturing to the game of futsal. And finally, our much-awaited segment, Field Trip. A weekly exodus to weekend soccer gatherings of football aspirants, has-beens, and never-will-bees on your neighborhood football pitches. This week, we visited the Ateneo football grounds where the Blue Guards get together every Sunday. Let's kick off with the UAAP Football Championships opening ceremonies held last January 15, 2006 at the Ateneo Football Grounds. of Metro Manila's finest men's and ladies collegiate teams The hour-long morning parade was graced by guest speaker, Philippine Football Federation President, Mr. Johnny Romualdez, who was quick to point out the achievements of Philippine football over the last few years as we saw the valiant performances of our national teams during the recently concluded Southeast Asian Games, where we beat powerhouse teams such as Vietnam and others. He also added the Philippine national ladies football team now ranks number 81 in the FIFA World Rankings up two spots from last year. As the guest of honors kicked the opening ball, defending champions Ateneo and UP men's teams were warming up as they kick off the competitions. In a rebuilding year for UP, much is expected from Ateneo to repeat this year. Let's catch the moments of the game. From the opening kickoff, Ateneo took control of the game, keeping much of ball possession in the first half. With several attempts from long range and a goal that was disallowed because of an offside violation. In the second half, UP struck first with a couple of shots from outside the penalty area. It was Ateneo, however, who drew first blood with two successive goals midway through the second half. In the end, it was a thrilling 3-0 victory for Ateneo. And that's how the game ended. When we come back, find out what the UP Maroons are doing to improve their UAAP chances as we feature them on our next segment, Passport, here on Football Mania.
And as the first round of competitions came to a close, we visited an injury-laden UP Maroon squad training and contemplating their place in this year's UAAP Championships. Under the tutelage of former national team player and longtime UP coach Bob Salvacion's guidance, the Maroons were serious and trained hard to avert a last place finish at this year's championships. We met with the team members and spoke to assistant coach Andres Gonzalez about their prospects. I'm Andres Gonzalez, assistant coach of the UP men's football team. I've been coaching for UP for two years now. Um, before that, I played uh, for the team for five years. From 1999 to 2004, my biggest accomplishment were the two uh, championships that we we were able to achieve during the year 2000 and year 2001. Currently, we are a rebuilding team, so because um, many of the old players have already graduated and. For the past few years, we haven't really recruited really good players. So hopefully, uh, we could build a solid base starting this year. And hopefully, in two years' time, we can really compete against the best teams in the UAAP. Hi, I'm Andoni Santos, striker. Hi, good morning. I'm Raul Grapidon, uh, the F center mid for the UP football team. Hi, I'm Franco Bambigo. I'm a defender, number three from the UP, UP Fighting Maroons. Hi, I'm David Soliano, defender of UP. Hi, I'm JJ Malunas, striker. Hi, I'm Mickey Cardenas, defender for UP. Hi, I'm John Casey Kasem from UP, playing defender. Hi, I'm Jerome Tabayoyong from the UP varsity team. Um, I play defender. Andre Mercader, midfielder. Magandang araw, ako si Gary Villame, Universidad ng Pilipinas. Hi, I'm Joey Damigini, defender. Uh, Mikel Salon, winger. Hi, I'm Christopher Dato, wearing 8 number jersey. <laughs> playing goalkeeper. Nacho Mendezona, goalkeeper for the UP men's football team. John Paulo Asinto, winger. I am Carla Henato, defender. Negros native and injured midfielder Marco Mendezona reasserts their chances. I'm Marco Mendezona, play for UP. I'm in the College of Human Genetics and I'm majoring in sports science. I play either midfield or striker. I've been playing for three and a half years now. The first round was very dismal for us. So if we have if we get a really good second round, maybe we'll make the finals. But that's a very slim chance now. We heard detailed instructions from Coach Bob as the Maroons absorbed the punishing pace of the training session in their attempt to record their first win in the second round of the championships. So we went back to catch the team play against the resilient UE Warriors team. What a great bicycle kick! Let's see that again! Better luck next time, dude! After a goalless first half, Coach Bob reminds the Maroons of the scolding they got during the training sessions. A second half goal by Maroon striker number 18, Mix Huat, gives the Maroons much hope to register their first win in these games. However, a quick counter attack by the UE Warriors brought the equalizer. But the Maroons never say die spirit instilled deep in their souls, they played on with a fierce attacking play. 
and an injury time goal by midfielder number 22, Antoni Santos, secures the Maroons' first win of the championships with a 2-1 victory. Next on Football Mania, we visited a group of former national team stalwarts who formed Hattrick Incorporated. This group was formed under the leadership of Mickey Trinidad, whose football prowess is well documented in football circles. We talked to Mickey about Hattrick. Yes, my name is Mickey Trinidad. I am the president of Hattrick Incorporated. Hattrick was uh, born some around five years ago. It was a brainchild of about eight professional athletes. We just had one basic vision that bonded all of us together. It was the passion of improving football in the country from, what, from the state it was in then. And um, each person had his own expertise professionally. And we brought this to the table and we put together Hattrick. Yeah, Hattrick Incorporated is a company whose main thrust is sports development in the Philippines, football in particular. So far, we've, had, we've done a number of futsal tournaments. Uh, the first two have been all male. It's open tournaments, invitationals. We have professional teams that have joined. We have had a lot of national players that have joined and are willing to come back. Actually, they're waiting for us to have another one. And our third tournament was an all-female tournament, which all three tournaments received very good reviews and they are still wanting more from us. So I would like to thank the city of Pasay for giving us so much help. Most of our, all of our futsal tournaments have been held there. They've been very cooperative. I would like to thank Mayor P. Trinidad for giving us all the support that we need. And I would like to thank our past sponsors and future sponsors. I guess the highlight would be, there's, there are several I can think of. One would be to participate in the SIA Games and represent our country. That would be, that was a very proud moment for me. And the next was to be asked to coach the national team. I mean, this was a, an honor in itself. I was asked to coach the 18 and under men's and then later on the women's uh, national team. The football has brought me all around the world, so I'm very thankful about this. Don't go away, you won't want to miss our next segment, Crash Course. Patrick will reintroduce a style of football made popular in the 1930s. Yes, it's football indoors on Football Mania. What's a football show that doesn't educate you about the game? And in the interest of promoting football in the Philippines, we ask Hattrick to provide you, our viewers, this week's Crash Course, a segment about futsal. Okay, this segment is brought to you by Hattrick Incorporated, geared for those people watching the show and say, you know, I want to go on the, I want to play futsal tomorrow. And I want to go on the court and know what to do, what drills I can make, what skills are involved, what are the rules exactly. This segment is for you. Futsal was started way back in 1930 in Montevideo, Uruguay by somebody named Carlos, Juan Carlos Seriani. And he devised a five-a-side version of soccer basically for the youth competitions in the YMCA and it just grew and grew in popularity until we have the futsal that is today. The term futsal is an international term that was derived from the Portuguese word football or futebol and the, Portuguese, and the Spanish word sala, meaning indoor. Football, sala, futsal. It's an indoor sport, it's very easily accessible, like I said, because of the venues that you have. And it's a, very, it's a very inexpensive sport to play. You don't need really that much in terms of equipment. So Hattrick Incorporated is going to demonstrate for you a few of the basic rules in futsal. ball in uh, the 11 aside on the field, you have a number five ball. And then in uh, futsal, you have the number four ball, which require, which actually has about 30% less bounce. And of course, you have the players, you have 11 aside. On the field, you have 11 players per side. And then on the futsal court, you have five per side. Okay, on 11 aside, there's um, some contact allowed. Whereas in futsal, they're very strict when it comes to contact. There should be no tackles and there should be no side uh, charging. On 11 aside, there is what we call the offside rule, whereas in futsal, this rule does not apply. There is no such thing as an offside rule in futsal. Uh, on the 11 aside, you have three substitutions per game, and um, that's it. Whereas in the futsal court, you have what is called flying substitutions. 
Anybody can come in anytime, come out, and then come back in. In 11 aside, we have what is called running time, where the, where the clock keeps running. And um, in um, futsal, it's called stop clock, where the referee stops time. In 11 aside, we have two 45-minute halves, whereas in futsal, we have two 20-minute halves. On 11 aside, we have no timeouts during the whole game, whereas in futsal, we have one timeout per half. In 11 aside, when the ball goes out, you have what is called a throw-in. Whereas in futsal, it's called a kick-in, whereas you put the ball on the ground, on the line, and kick it to pass it to another teammate. Futsal, quite generally, is a football game played indoors with somewhat different rules. To enjoy the game of futsal even better, and to make sure you don't get laughed off the court, we suggest the following equipment. Jersey or shirt, shorts, football socks, shin guards are compulsory, and footwear is comprised of indoor shoes or futsal designed shoes with gum rubber soles. On 11 a side game, when the ball goes out of the goal line, the goalie kicks it, it's called a goal kick. A goal clearance is another method of restarting play. A goal may not be scored directly from a goal clearance. The goal clearance is awarded when the whole of the ball, having last touched a player of the attacking team, passes over the goal line either on the ground or in the air. The ball is thrown from any point within the penalty area by the goalkeeper of the defending team. Opponents remain outside the penalty area until the ball is in play. The ball is in play when it is thrown directly beyond the penalty area. The substitution zone is situated on the same side of the playing court as the team's benches and directly in front of them and is where the players enter and leave the playing court for substitutions. Within these zones, the whole body of the outgoing player must be totally outside of the playing court before the incoming player can even step onto the court, otherwise this is deemed a violation. Substitutions done outside of the substitution zone is also deemed a violation. So now that you know what to wear, here's one last tip. Dribbling is best done with the sole of the shoe. So we hope you enjoyed that little segment. This is Mickey Trinidad of Hattrick Incorporated wishing you many more fun games of futsal and remember, Football Mania is the show to go to. In this part of the show, we went around to ask football aficionados their bets for Germany 2006 FIFA World Cup. Let's hear who they're rooting for to win this year's competition. Well, Brazil is still the big favorite. I wish it would be Germany. Yeah, it's still Brazil. <laughs> I think I'll bet for England. For this year, uh, France is still Brazil. Korea. England. Germany. Brazil. Italy. Brazil. Brazil. World Cup, England. Right now, uh, a growing favorite is England because they say that it's the most talented team that they have put together ever in the history of England. But, you know, I'm a sentimental uh, kind of guy. I still go for Germany because uh, they have always been there. They've never really won these past few World Cups, but they've always been there. And I think this is also their year. And with England there, it's going to be really, really, a really exciting World Cup. This time we bring you Field Trip, where we visit the various football clubs and pitches around Metro Manila. For those of you looking to get back into the game, raise a sweat, or just looking to keep in tip-top shape, this is the guide to your football adventure. This week, we go to the Ateneo football grounds to catch a bunch of footballers playing to shake off their hangovers. They consider themselves as has-beens and never will-bees, and still playing after all these years in the spirit of camaraderie. We went to see the Blue Guards and talked to them about their history and the welfare of football here in the Philippines. I'm uh, Mindo Fajardo, and I'm the oldest in the team. It started in 1965. It was sort of an informal thing. A group of Ateneo and uh, non-Ateneo ex-football players coming from a party one night um, decided that they sort of wash off the hangover <laughs> and so they actually came over to Ateneo and they picked up a ball, they borrowed the ball at a gym 
they went across the field and, and started kicking the ball. You know, they thought it was a good idea. So they said, why don't we meet here every Sunday? And from then, you know, those guys started to pull in more people and then they kept on playing every Sunday since 1965. Why Blue Guards? In 65, if you remember, the, uh, there was a the cultural revolution in China. And there were the Red Guards, you know, flashing their, uh, their booklets, you know, that sort of thing. So we felt it was a cute uh, thing to name ourselves, uh, in retaliation, the Blue Guards. The, one of the binding factors in Blue Guards is basically the camaraderie. And this is brought about by the third half, that's what we call it. No? It's basically the drinking afterwards and the enjoyment, the socializing. So that really brought us together. That's how you can get, uh, I guess, uh, uh, has been and never will be together. <laughs> in fact, many of the national players, national team players, who used to play for the national team came into Blue Guards and continued playing. But there were some who were still aspiring for a national team and they started to play with us. So I guess they picked up a lot of tricks from us uh, and they moved on uh, and made the national team. Development is very important. In our case, at that time, I walked into football just because after getting to second year high school, I realized I wasn't growing any taller anymore. So I decided to pick a sport, you know, where the ball was close, close to the ground. There are a lot of kids who play every Sunday in many football fields. We didn't have this before. Youth development is because of a German grant. You know, Germans have been pouring in money, but then actually we had to spread this out nationwide. So we're not getting enough development as the Thais do, as the Vietnamese. One of the biggest uh, factors, I guess, in uh, the development of soccer in this country, the interest that's going around now, no? there are more and more kids uh, joining football and playing. I think it's because of the advent of cable. Because we're seeing a lot of uh, European football now and you know, they, it's you know, bringing in a lot of interest. So we should, I think, stick to a sport where we can excel at. And football is one of them. We have actually two farm teams composed of uh, kids uh, six years old up to 15, I think. No? And uh, they're, they're playing actually in uh, Welfareville. Okay, it's a uh, underprivileged children actually. And another group is being managed by uh, Alden Kison uh, in the uh, San Paloc area. They play indoors, some basketball courts. Alden uh, picked them up, you know, he, he, he lives somewhere in the Pitan, I think. And so he picked up his kids, inter they got interested in the game, they started to kick the ball around, and eventually they joined the kids' leagues, and then they've, they've been winning trophies. When we come back, find out what the Blue Guards are doing to change the state of football on the local level, here on Football Mania. In our continued commitment to bring you all the football events around Metro Manila, we bring you back our segment, What's Going On? And this time, we're featuring the Manila Indoor Football Champs League, held at the Tapitan Sports Complex last January 14th. Hi, I'm Alden Kison, member of the Blue Guards Football Club, uh, founder of the Tapitan Football Camp. And we're organizing a football tournament. It's called the Manila Indoor Football Champs League. It's a uh, indoor soccer tournament uh, featuring boys uh, uh, 15 years and under. Just to show the kids that football is for everybody, uh, rich or poor, since we don't have a field, so we just availed of the basketball court. I'm Waldi Magtoto. I'm the assistant coach for the Pitan Football Club. I'm also a player of Blue Guards. Yes, actually, this is the first time we have organized this uh, Champs League. And um, uh, we're actually planning to a uh, continuous uh, tournament. Because we're really, um, we're really interested in um, you know, um, developing soccer in the Philippines. Because 
You know, it's always basketball here, and uh, everybody knows that height is might when it comes to basketball. And since we're, you know, small and everything, it is it, it, it is this uh, sport that, that that really fits us. Well, this uh, football camp is organized by Manila Sports Council under Mr. Ali Atchensa and uh, Blue Guards Football Club and PAGCOR. Well, that's all the football we have for you this week. Join us again next week as we bring you another power-packed episode of Football Mania as we bring you more results in the current standings of the UAAP. And you'll also meet the Ateneo ladies team and visit the UP Sunken Garden to catch football aficionados feasting on their weekend dose of football. And a quick visit to Sports House in Glorieta for your guide to shopping for players' equipment. We hope you enjoyed our show. For your comments and suggestions, email us at football.mania at yahoo.com and we'll surely deliver the Philippine brand of football to the world. So keep it glued to this station. Same time next week as we bring you another episode of Football Mania. We'll leave you now with our last segment, Music Jam with Blitzkrieg Bob by the Ramones.